Hey, welcome back to the fabric admin section where we're going to be going through Microsoft Fabric tenant settings in the just Microsoft Fabric uh, grouping of capabilities. There's a whole bunch of new things here. This is actually kind of exciting. I didn't even know what some of these were until we got into it. I started doing research for this video. Oh, let's get into this. All right, um, before we do, make sure you hit that like, subscribe button, turn on that alarm bell uh, so you get notified to any of the future videos that we got coming out. That's just really important, really helps me and the channel out. Um, but we're gonna be getting into it. We're gonna be going through these different settings. Guarantee that you can do this. You know, this is something that is completely comprehensible and that's in your power to manage. But if you find yourself saying, oh my gosh, Chris, I'm really overwhelmed. Can you help me with this? Well, I certainly can. Head over to CareerSBI.com, click on Hire Data God. You can get me. Uh, I, I will help you out as well. So, uh, but let's get to the video. All right. So the first section we're going to be tackling here is Data Activator, um, or in the Microsoft Fabric settings, there's there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven settings. Some of them are new, and that might mean that you don't have these in your tenant as of yet. Uh, you know, they roll these features out, uh, and it might be something different when it finally gets to your tenant because the name changes can change a little bit. But let's hit on Data Activator to start with, okay? So uh, Data Activator does have the standard settings so that you can go in and uh, let's quick read this, turn on Data Activator Preview to allow users to define a specific set of conditions about their data, then receive notifications when those conditions are met. Uh, after they receive notifications, users can take action to correct the changes in conditions. This setting can be managed by both the tenant and the capacity levels. Data Activator is currently available in a select re regions. And when you turn on Data Activator, you agree to the Data Activator preview terms, learn more. Well, hit on that learn more. Uh, you'll also find that link down below so you can go check that out yourself. Um, you're gonna find that this is a very common setting. I'm not gonna go into it as many times uh, in, in the future videos or on every setting, but the idea being you can either allow, enable it and turn on for everyone in your company disable it for your entire company or enable it for a specific security group, or you can do an exception on security groups. I, I am much more of the proactive approach than a, a, like, hey, I wanna enable, not I wanna disable, but there might be some reasons why you might wanna do this. So uh, the, the reason why you might say, hey, I want a specific security group to do this. Uh, the biggest one is, hey, I want, this is a preview feature or a feature I'm not familiar with. I only want my advanced users or my uh, center of excellence to go in and start to build out these capabilities, define my standards, and then roll that out and make it more publicly available. Or maybe a feature is heavily, uh, you know, you know, consumes a lot of resources and compute. Maybe you want you only want certain people to do that who can be trusted to be responsible with that that expense. Okay, <clears throat> but in general terms. Data Activator allows people to actually do something from the data, right? Like actually take, you know, when something happens, it triggers an event and something goes from there. It is, frankly, I think this is one of the more powerful features that Microsoft and, and Fabric has rolled out. I highly recommend this is something if you're not, if you don't have this enabled, you should be enabling it and experimenting it within your company. If this is enabled and people are not using it, you should definitely look into using it because this really transforms what it means to work with your data. All right, so that's Data Activator. Next item is users can create fabric items. Now you may or may not have this on for your entire organization. This is my trial uh, environment. Um, <clears throat> now that fabric is GA, there's no, there's no like uh, reason, like a system-wide reason why you might not want people to do that. You may have some reasons internally that you don't want other people to, to create fabric items, to be able to create data pipelines or uh, to create data lakes or, or whatever it may be. I would caution you against disabling these capabilities and I would encourage you to turn this on for the number one reason being this gives you line of sight and visibility into what people are doing inside your organization. And in fact, it encourages them to do things in a way that you can manage and you can observe what's going on. So 
inside of Fabric, you can see and trace all the pipelines and every, everything that's going on. As an administrator, you got line of sight into that. Outside of Fabric, when you're talking about people working with like Excel, copy, paste, access database, email, files, that's this whole dark web, dark shadow IT area that you have no idea about. Turning Fabric on enables you to gain, bring all of that stuff into the light. Even if it's not something that's controlled by IT, at least you have some idea of what's going on there, okay? So that that's what users can create Fabric items. Now, users can create Fabric environments to save and apply Spark settings. This is a preview thing. But basically what it does is it allows users to go in and configure out specific Spark environments that they may want to operate in. Um, that, that allows them to fine tune the, the notebooks that they're working in and set different settings. And, you know, if, if you're big into data engineering or if you're big into data science, this is something that you do to really optimize your workflow and, uh, make your solutions more robust and easier to develop and manage it. I would highly recommend that you enable this and allow this. But this is again, one of those things where it might make sense inside your organization to say, Hey, I'm going to allow the, the center of excellence uh, data engineers or the center of excellence data scientists to define the runtimes that we as an organization are going to want to have and, and, and create those spark environments and then allow other people to use it. All right. Um, now we're about to get into something that is brand new inside of fabric. And this is going to be something that is MVP in nature. And let's be okay. Let's be cool with MVP stuff. All right. That means minimum viable product means experiment with it. See what it does. See what it doesn't do and what it does. Well, great. Use that. What it doesn't do well, don't use it. You know, just make note of it or be aware of it. Um, and things that you want to change, head over to learn dot, uh, or Microsoft fabric dot learn or Microsoft or fabric .microsoft slash learn. I think it is, uh, and give them feedback, let them know like what you need to change on it. Okay. So this one is sustainably sustainability solutions, right? Again, you can, uh, it is by default disabled this. I just found this one this morning. I don't know how long it's been out there. Um, but when I went in and I looked, looked into what the heck is this, um, uh, this is basically, it's beginning to build out, uh, an ESG data set and reports that could help you when in, in, in creating, uh, you know, reporting inside your organization to show how effectively and efficiently, uh, the compute and the consumption that you as an organization has when it comes to your, your, uh, ecological footprint. Okay. So again, the links are going to be down below, uh, you know, go do check this out. Uh, it is a preview feature, but it might be something pretty cool to test. Uh, we'll circle back and we'll try that maybe you know in more detail in another video. Okay, so that's the sustainability solution. They also have a retail data solution. Now this is uh, is this is in the same vein. Same vein is this is a solution that Microsoft has created in conjunction with a number of very large retailers. If you've been part of this uh, effort to create this data set and to create these reports or to create these items, you know, leave a comment down below. Love to hear more about uh, how this was created. But uh, generally speaking, this is content that was created as at a macro level as these are the big key, key things that as a retail organization, you'd want to need, you know, want to, encourage or think about or, or be analyzing. The big advantage here is this is built by very large organizations as these are the tenants or the, the baseline foundations of the analytics space. If you're a smaller organization, you don't have that depth of people doing that type of market research, doing that type of research, be able to piggyback upon this can be very effective and uh, very helpful in getting these things up and running. Um, uh, do check it out again, MVP solution. Uh, but something that might be really helpful for you. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is something it's not tagged with new, but creating an event house is something that honestly, I didn't know what this was. And I had to like do some Googling and uh, co-piling to figure what out what it is, but there is a doc out here about how you can create and manage an event house which uh, allows you to manage multiple databases at once, sharing capacity and resources to optimize performance and cost. Provides unified monitoring and management across all databases and per database. 
For more information, see Event House Overview Preview. Uh, I'm gonna click on that, see what's here. Okay, so here's more information about that. But um, I, honestly, I think this is kind of cool. Uh, again, something I don't know much about, but it is something brand new and it's out in the service and available today. Uh, preview, preview wise, okay. And then uh, the last one inside this section is users can create real time dashboards. This is in preview. Uh, users can create real time dashboards that are natively integrated with KQL databases using Kustu query language or KQL. This fully integrated dashboard experience provides improved query and visualization performance and easier data exploration. Uh, that, it's actually really cool. They've got an entire like learning course out here with all sorts of different features on this. Uh, while this is listed as new and preview uh, of the new and preview things that are tagged inside the Microsoft Fabric space, this is the one with clearly the most number of assets out there and that they've been, you know, put a ton of time and energy into. Uh, it's a pretty cool, cool feature. All right. So that's our first first one of the detailed like walkthrough of items that are inside Microsoft Fabric. I hope you find that found that useful. Again, hit that like button, smash it if you want, if you really enjoyed it. Heck, you know, maybe subscribe to your channel, share this with your friends and family. And if you find that this is so overwhelming that you can't handle this, head over to creatorsbi.com, hire yourself a data god, like let me come on out and help you out with what you got going on inside your organization. Um, or at least one of my uh, esteemed associates, uh, if I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a busy guy, but you know, love to help you either way. Uh, you guys have a great day and in the next, we'll see you shortly for the next one. Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.